Greetings, my dear viewers. It's March the 21st, and today I want to talk about the future. About the future which will come quite soon and which Ukraine, first of all, will have to face. The overwhelming majority of the country's population will face it. Inevitably. You know, you can fool yourself, but the reality will not change. For example, today I watched one of the latest videos of the Kiev regime's propagandist, Aristovich, in which he basically cries and says that everything is coming to the inevitable breakdown. If you watch this video, uh, the link I will give below, you would understand that it is the story of a doomed man who is well aware that the thing he serves is doomed and he is simply trying to justify himself and prepare himself to flee. That is, when he speaks of moral failures, he speaks first and foremost of himself. So all that remains is to flee to some Warsaw, to found some Warsaw next, and then to spread the same things that the next of Warsaw tells us today. This is what Aristovich is preparing himself for. At the same time, he is encouraging ordinary Ukrainians to continue to fight, to lay down their lives for something unclear and unobvious, and with absolutely no prospects. You know, when I talked to those people uh, from the town of Suminau, in the first two weeks there was such an aggression that no one wanted to listen to me. Today, more and more people realize that my arguments are based on reality, and they begin at least to speculate. They begin thinking about the future. You have to understand that the problem of war is not primarily about battles. Who defeated whom, how many soldiers were killed, how many were wounded, respectively the ratio of losses of the parties. First of all, those sides suffer heavy losses who are not prepared for war, either economically or psychologically. I will tell you how it will look like on the example of one particular city, my hometown Sumy, which is generally blocked by Russian troops, but, as they say, does not surrender. The truth is that no one actually attacks the town. And this is the situation that has been going on there for three weeks now. Let's look ahead a little bit. Already in the city, the big problems begin. The city is on the verge of starvation. There is not enough medicine, there is not enough everything, and there is no understanding how long the situation will last. And now let's assume for a second that that's all. There are no active combat operations, some sort of temporary truce has been established, and it is clear that Russian troops are not going anywhere. Imagine the situation that they even agreed with someone that everything, uh, I mean any humanitarian cargo, goes through and no one resists it. And I have question number one. With this ruined logistics, with blown up bridges, which these moronic patriots blew up actually, how can everything be delivered to the city of Suminau? How is it possible to deliver goods to the city of Sumy, assuming that Russia is not helping? Can you imagine that today? And ask yourself now, who is to blame for all this? Who blew up all those bridges that absolutely did not prevent the Russian army from advancing, but which now prevent the locals from living normal lives? Let's go a little bit further and think about it. I know what the Sumy territorial defense is doing today. So they are just waiting for the period of uncertainty in local government to begin, and they will start conducting sabotage operations. They won't, for one simple reason. Because their own families will tell them, like Vasya, Kolya, Petya, haven't you thought about how will I live? Haven't you thought about what will I eat? Have you thought about how your hometown will have certain things like medicines? After all, how will your governor handle the next heating season? Because if you don't resolve this issue in the summer, the city will freeze to death in winter. But they don't think about that today. They only think about the war, the war to the last Ukrainian. And all their actions will bring these same Ukrainians to a real humanitarian disaster next winter, which will certainly be blamed on Russia in the West. But the people of Sumy, and not only Sumy, will not feel better. In my opinion, the current rulers of Ukraine and many others still can't understand that the war that is going on in Ukraine now can't be taken like the Great Patriotic War, when more than 90% of the population were ordinary people from the countryside, living on a subsistence economy. Today, the majority of the population of Ukraine does not live by subsistence farming. And this is a key factor, far more important than the amount of even heavy military vehicles. And the population of the country, which has fallen into temporary patriotic hysteria, will very easily calm down, and this is exactly what Aristovich is talking about. He also says 
Listen carefully, because he is not a fool. He also says that we, those who called for war, will be hated by the vast majority of Ukrainians. And he is absolutely right about that. In a few weeks, I emphasize it. If the war ends today, the question arises, what will the citizens of a 200,000 Sumi do next? And there is only one solution – to negotiate with the Russian side. And the Russian side will set strict conditions – either the Ukrainian territorial defense surrenders its weapons and operate only like police structure in order to eradicate uh, this looting that exists in the city today, or they can continue to resist. The same will happen in Chernihiv and other cities. Yes, in those smaller towns uh, that are tied to agriculture, the situation will be a little easier. But there is almost no resistance in such towns. And if the regional capitals fall, everything else will fall. I emphasize that everything I said happens. If everything stops now, at this very moment, today, and if we listen to Aristovich, and he did confirm what I said yesterday on the prediction of military operations of the Russian army, the Russian armed forces have finished regrouping and are preparing to strike a decisive blow to the Donetsk task force of the Ukrainian armed forces. And imagine that all this will happen at the moment of the front line falling down. This is the very situation to which the propagandist Aristovich, perfectly aware of it of course, is preparing his flock. He is trying to shrug off responsibility and shift it onto ordinary people who have supposedly lost faith in victory. No, they do not lose faith in victory, but they stop believing you, because five days ago you were still telling them about that together with this Gordon, who showed off to Lvov at the first danger. And he, let me remind you, used to say, I will defend Kyiv to the last. As soon as the first missile attacked, he got into his expensive car and drove to Lvov, and from there he urges all Ukrainians to die. So, five days ago, they were laughing together about the reparations they would impose on the Russian Federation, and today Aristovich, like a snotty little girl, is telling us that Ukrainians must prepare for the inevitable, the inevitable defeat. And so I want to ask those people who were spitting in my face three weeks ago. You're going to pay for what you said as soon as we push the Russian army back. Guys, it hurts me very much to say what I have been saying for three weeks. It hurts me very much to see the war that is going on in Ukraine today, but unfortunately, it was already inevitable in 2014. Moreover, it began back in 2014, and for seven plus years you have tried to ignore it. And today, when this war, which began, I repeat, back in 2014, has reached you, you are looking for someone to blame. The blame is on the regime that started it back in 2014, that brought in the army to suppress dissent in Donbass in 2014, when there was no a single Russian soldier there. Now, not only this war has reached you, but today the regime in Kiev is agonizing, and its only goal is to make you fight to the end. Because as much blood as possible has to be spilt. Uh, so it will be harder to heal the wounds that this war has inflicted on all of us. That's what I wanted to say in this video. I'm sorry if this morning's video is a little emotional, but there is no other way I can describe it today. It really hurts my heart for my country, for my people, who have been brazenly and cynically lied to and abused by their government, which was forcing them to do things that under other circumstances my people would have never done. But thanks God, that will soon be over. Bye.